I'm Jason Bellamy coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee in APTA's next conference. I'm joined by Steve George who just finished giving the 21st Maley Lecture. Congratulations for Thank you. All. Thank you. So the lecture was about pain which couldn't be a more relevant topic right now with the launch of the Choose PT campaign with all the conversation that's happening about opioids. Um, let's just talk about a few highlights. First one of the things you did was you did something really creative. You compared a tattoo artist's approach to pain to uh, basically national guidelines related to pain. So right. kind of describe that for me. Yeah, I think um, first that was based on a true story. So it was really uh, had had some time with the tattoo artist and um, I was at a pain conference and I just thought the irony was interesting. So we started talking about it and it really hit me that through his work in a completely different realm of the world, he had learned a lot about pain because his livelihood is linked directly to it and he knows he's not actually hurting someone. There's not the medical context to it but he had gotten to some of the same places that, um, that pain researchers had gotten. So when I talked to people about that, when they, when they understood it, it really made an impact. So I wanted to share that with everyone else because it it's makes you think about it a little bit differently. Right, so the tattoo artist basically realized that when it comes to where is painful on the body to get tattooed, it depends. Yeah. And that in terms of the level of pain that it can be shaped by basically if the tattoo is celebratory or right. related to, uh, you know, I guess, I don't know why a tattoo would be non-celebratory. That's an interesting situation. Yes. But basically that those factors can factor into the kind of pain people are feeling. Right. And that physical therapists need to remember that when they're dosing exercise too, right? Yes, yeah, I mean, context matters. Mm -hmm. And just because the therapist thinks something is beneficial if the patient doesn't share that belief especially when their body is communicating to them with more pain the therapist really has to um, spend a little bit of time understanding well what is this patient's belief about this exercise just because I'm a healthcare provider doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna be over be able to override um, the patient's kind of normal protective responses to pain even though I know and I think that's sometimes where we jump ahead even though I know as a physical therapist I'm not just prescribing something that is harmful. So um, this is going to be difficult without visuals but one of the things your, your talk was about roadmap to revolution and you talked about uh, different maps to pain. Um, so give me a sense of uh, what the, the, the best pain map looks like and how that would help PTs better treat pain. Well I think one way to talk about it is that the best pain map is not linear. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it, it, what I tried to do is get people away from um, our obsession with finding a source and realize that um, there's many dimensions uh, and those dimensions need to be accounted for to help us better understand the way that pain is presenting. So any map that includes multiple factors that aren't directly physical in nature and help you get a better understanding of the context um, or that person's mood or their beliefs, their coping strategies, things like that, they all matter. So um, the map that I chose visually, I liked it because it, it had the most important domains, but I didn't think it was overly prescriptive because I know when people get into implementation, they want more detail, but I didn't want to be overly prescriptive. I wanted people to realize if I have something that is capturing the mood and the context, um, something that gives me an idea of how they're modulating nociception, that may be a lot more helpful than measuring their range of motion, testing their strength, things that we kind of do reflexively. So uh, you closed by talking that, that while the CDC is doing this call for non-opioid options, um, that physical therapists may in fact be ideal to be that non-opioid uh, choice for pain. And, and you listed right. some reasons that they might be ideal. Why? Well, first of all, when, when I, I work a lot with psychologists, and it's a very interesting contrast because they don't touch their patients. And they tell us that their patients say things to us that they would like to be disclosed in a psychology session, but when there's that distance, so the hands-on is vital, physical, and I think where we sometimes get lost is the hands-on is the important part, and sometimes we get lost in between forest and trees over well, what is the best hands-on approach. The important thing is, you're using that hands-on approach to directly address the body. The second part is to not medicalize it. I think that's where following a medical model for treating pain can lead physical therapists down, to the, down the wrong path. So we need to have models that are flexible and don't lead to 
diagnostic imaging. Like if we can't identify a definitive source during our examination, that it doesn't mean you refer them on for more imaging. Um, you realize it, you're not going to find it. The expectation of the patient is that the physical therapist will interact with them through that part of the body. Part of that will be verbal, part of that will be manual communication. And I think that's, that's a very important part of our profession's practice, for, especially for pain. Absolutely. Couldn't be a more relevant topic. Terrific lecture. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, I can't even answer any questions about it now, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, for more updates like this from Next, you can go to the Next website. I'm Jason Bellamy, and I'll catch you later.